Today's video sponsor is GVG More, bringing you all the software deals you need, like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2021 with a new Windows 11 design, and even Windows Server 2022. For all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 25% off, getting a Windows 10 serial key for only $16. Then use the key on your Windows settings, and you'll have an activated system. Hello guys, Ancient Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. And as for this video, we're reviewing the Adrenaline 23.30.13.1 drivers. And if you're asking yourself why this number is so odd, it is because it is a beta driver. In this case, the Avatar Pandir... <laughs> In this case, the Avatar Frontiers of Pandora drivers. And the reason why I'm making this video is because hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is back. If you guys don't know what hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is, usually, usually most of the processes, the calls and so on are handled by Windows, so via software. And what hardware accelerated GPU scheduling does is that it actually uh, enhances the software, the software uh, GPU scheduling with the hardware. It doesn't go and pass all the scheduling to the hardware itself. It just enhances uh, its abilities uh, of the software scheduling, of course, via hardware. And this usually might lead to lower latencies and performance gains. Now, hardware accelerated GPU scheduling isn't something new, and the first driver AMD released for that were the 20.5.1 beta drivers specially released for the AGS or hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. And after that, there were no more news whatsoever. So they released the driver then, and then they just forgot about it. And it seems that the reason they didn't care more about hardware accelerated GPU scheduling was that it didn't work as expected with their RDNA 2 GPUs that were recently released, so the 6000 series, and it didn't do much for those GPUs. So they just kind of abandoned the support for it. Although more or less six months ago we had a Windows update because we have the DC Age or DS something drivers which are basically the AMD drivers and we have the UWP drivers which are the Windows update drivers. And in those same Windows update drivers more or less six months ago they introduced once again hardware accelerated GPU scheduling and from the previous video that I tested from the previous test that I made on the video, sorry, uh, we actually had a performance increase more or less, not by much, but we did have a performance increase on those previous drivers when using hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. And once again, it seems that now hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is back. Although, once again, it isn't back for all GPUs. I tested with the RX 7600 and it didn't work, at least on my Intel CPU, uh, it didn't work. Hardware accelerated GPU scheduling just didn't work. I tested with the 6950 XT on my main PC and it didn't work as well. And it seems that the only GPU that I have well, that I have tested that works with hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is the 7900 XTX. So I suppose that the only cards available for now in these drivers uh, to use the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling are the 7900 series, the 7800 series and the 7700 series because some people already tested the 7700 XT and the 7800 XT GPUs and they were indeed working with hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. So I guess that all the cards from the 7000 series work besides the 7600 or maybe the, 60, the 7600 just wouldn't benefit at all from hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. But we should ask ourselves, why now? Why is AMD bringing hardware accelerated GPU scheduling after all this time right now? And if we think about it, we have Avatar coming right now and Avatar is actually the third game featuring FSR 3. And with the quarter one of 2024 getting closer and closer, we'll also have the AFMF, so basically the fluid motion frames on the drivers getting into the official drivers. Meaning that they not only will have the, the official drivers supporting the fluid motion frames, but they will have, they will start having more and more uh, titles using FSR 3. And I suppose that's why they are, they are actually introducing the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling since it may reduce latency and so on and it may enhance the scheduling ability that may actually reduce the input latency of the fluid motion frames I suppose and it might actually increase the performance of, um, of FSR 3 frame generation as well and that's why I believe they're bringing that on this beta driver that supports Avatar Frontiers of Pandora that is the third title bringing once again FSR 3 
and the frame generation. As for the release notes, we don't have many things actually. We have only new feature highlights with new game support with Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. And then we have known issues like audio may intermittently become out of sync with video when recording from AMD Software Adrenaline Edition with AV1 codec. Intermittent corruption may be observed on the racetrack while playing EA Sports WRC. Stars may intermittently fail to appear while playing Crisis Remastered, and the last one is intermittent micro stuttering may be experienced when running Chrome based browsers on systems that pair a Radeon RX 7000 series GPU with a secondary display connected to an AMD Ryzen 7000 series processor. And that's about it for the release notes, so we have no mention to the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, we have no mention whatsoever to other things that changed, because I can tell you right away that some things changed. And I can tell you right away that some some of these uh, of these known issues, <coughs> sorry, some of these known issues were fixed on the 23.11.1 drivers, and if they're here, once again, means that we don't have, for example, the game optimizations for Alan Wake 2, meaning that the performance in Alan Wake 2 will be worse, even with hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. So after all the talking, well, it seems that hardware accelerated GPU scheduling does not do any good for RDNA 2 GPUs. But what about the RDNA 3 GPUs? Let's see. The payphone was ringing. Somehow I knew the call was for me. Hello? Hello, Wake? Yes. Do you know who I am? No. Who is this? We'll get to that later. There are spies all over. Shadows. A sense of deja vu washed over me. Had I had this conversation before? Alan, listen to me carefully. Caldera Street Station, the subway. You need to go there. I'll call you again later. Make sure to pick up. Do I know you? I, I know you from somewhere. You've just forgotten again. So as you saw with the RX 7900 XTX, even though we have hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, the 23.11.1 drivers, which are the official ones right now, are still overall better in this card than the, than the beta ones for the Avatar game. But still, basically we have once again hacks on, but we have more power draw, well, more power draw in Assassin's Creed Mirage most of the time while having the same performance or worse which is not optimal and we have lower performance in Alan Wake 2 because once again these drivers do not support the Alan Wake 2 optimization so overall even with hardware accelerated GPU scheduling we have more or less the same performance. I also tested the, um, the FSR 3 and the frame generation on Immortals of Avium to see if hardware accelerated GPU scheduling actually made a difference and I I can tell you right away that I saw no differences whatsoever, but it might just be me, and maybe it makes a difference in Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, I don't really know, and it, maybe it makes a difference on the FSR 3 titles to come, I don't really know, but at least from what I tested, it is basically the same. And now that we saw an RDNA 3 GPU, let's watch an RDNA 2 GPU and see if these drivers work better or worse even without the hardware accelerated GPU schedule. The payphone was ringing. 
Somehow, I knew the call was for me. Hello? Alan Wake? Yes. Do you know who I am? No. Who is this? We'll get to that later. There are spies all over. Shadows. A sense of deja vu washed over me. Had I had this conversation before? Alan, listen to me carefully. Caldera Street Station. And as you saw, this is actually quite odd because the RX 6950 XT doesn't support X, but it does have more FPS on Assassin's Creed Mirage versus the drivers, the, the 23.11.1 drivers, and it has lower FPS in Alan Wake 2 because it doesn't support the Alan Wake 2 optimizations, but at the same time, it works better in Assassin's Creed Mirage, although that both drivers support Assassin's Creed Mirage optimizations which is quite odd, but I guess it is what it is. But I mean, these are beta drivers, so it's acceptable, let's say that. Now, as for the things that I found with these drivers. Now, I have absolutely no crashes whatsoever with any driver, with the 7900 XTX, with the 6950 XT, with the 7600, everything was working flawlessly. And as for the new things that these drivers bring, these drivers are closer to the fluid motion frame drivers than they are closer to the 23.11.1. And we do have the um, AFMF drivers layout. So basically we have a uh, different menu. So the, the graphics menu is actually a full menu now instead of being divided into main menu and advanced menu. And we have also the new metrics system, which is much, much better than the metrics we had before on the previous drivers. The new metrics are much better. You can actually select the colors uh, of the things you can change names, you can do um, many more things and you actually have more metrics than you did before. So the metrics were improved like on the AFMF drivers and the menus were also different. Although we do not have fluid motion frames on these drivers, they are disabled. But in my point of view, it means that uh, the following drivers will most likely have this layout as well. So they will keep the, the improvements of the official drivers but maybe let's say the 23.12.1 will have the different layout with the new metrics and the new menus as well. And in the first quarter of 2024, they will then, uh, they will then add the fluid motion frames technology to the official drivers as well. That's, that's what I believe it's gonna happen. But well, nonetheless, it's going, it's going well, it's going well, AMD is actually evolving. Uh, not everything is, is good because they have some growing pains but besides that, it seems that it's gonna go well. And if they actually manage to implement hardware accelerated GPU scheduling in RDNA 3 well, things will go much better. AMD already does way more things hardware side than NVIDIA. NVIDIA usually, uh, in terms of scheduling and so on, uses the CPU a lot more. Hence, why, for example, when you're playing different games, when you're playing CPU heavy games, uh, the AMD GPUs tend to work better to work better there with lower end CPUs because they have lower CPU overhead because once again, the GPUs do a lot more scheduling, AMD GPUs do a lot more scheduling on the hardware side than the NVIDIA ones. So the NVIDIA ones just put more work to the CPU, creating a higher CPU overhead, creating lower FPS in CPU bound scenarios. That's basically it. And well guys, that's all for this video, thank you very much for watching, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video, as that really helps a lot. And sorry for all the constant talking, but I wanted to explain things to you the best way I could. When I'm feeling good, when I'm really, really light in the head, I can speak English properly, but most times it's, it's harder, because once again I speak, or I think in Portuguese and then I speak in English. <laughs> so it's the translation time, it's kind of the delay. Thank you very much once again and see you in the next video guys. Cheers!